So let's get a big picture view of the 2020 Prius Prime. I have the limited trim level to the Prius Prime and it has for fuel economy on the electric part is 133 miles per gallon and with the hybrid system is 54. So it's, it's definitely a eco focused vehicle. It does have the Apple CarPlay, five seating positions, and it's an overall a not just a comfortable, easy to drive vehicle. So we're gonna take it for a test drive as well. Uh, I'm just gonna show you a few things. Here in the front, I have a separate night video, so showing the, the, the headlights and all that stuff at nighttime. So it does, but it does have an LED system. So you have eight LED projectors, and then you have uh, fog lights there, all LEDs, turn signals as well here in the front. Now I've um, noticed there's a combination. A lot of the, there's like regular standard yellow looking bulbs randomly throughout this vehicle. So it's not a full LED uh, type vehicle, uh, but it does have um, an offset backup camera, parking sensors across the back, really interesting design. Uh, you notice the Prime will have this like kind of wave to the back of the vehicle and it's even in the glass as well. So it's very distinct looking and, and pretty cool when you're looking out the rear view mirror, uh, you can see, you know, basically that, that kind of like distinct style. Um, so that's pretty neat. Uh, it has alloy wheels, but they do have a wheel cover on the outside and this is for aerodynamics mostly it does have four-wheel disc brakes I mean it is a um, you know a lot of standard features basically you'd find on a lot of other vehicles it does have a proximity key and you just keep it with you and you can use the vehicle 100% now it also has a pretty cool feature it doesn't have a remote start but it has a uh, the ability to turn on the air conditioning so you press and hold that button for a few seconds when the vehicle is locked and turned off and it will keep everything off but it'll just get the interior of the vehicle um, the air conditioner going and cooling down so that's really handy um, and that's a you know not you running the engine so that's great now it does have the ability to lock the doors by putting your finger over the sensor or unlock it by putting your hand behind the handle here in the front doors only uh, it's not doing it because the vehicle's on now so remember I was talking about just standard bulbs randomly here and there. Well, this one here at the bottom of the door is the same deal. It has the no LED on the puddle light at the bottom. Now it has soft touch here, here, and here. Now you notice it's not that soft. It's, it's, um, it's bottoms out quickly, but these are soft touch surfaces. The hard touch are just down at the bottom. And uh, really like the styling of the door overall. Uh, it has that two-tone black and then the white there and it has the white seats which is really great for summertime see it has a lot of leg room a little bit of tapering here on the right side it has heated seats but not cooled seats and the seats are comfortable I hadn't had any issues uh, with this vehicle as far as driving here's a glove compartment and it's smooth plastic on the inside and it's not really all that big but it's pretty standard size i guess this part has like a little dished out spot but if you put something there it's just going to fall off so it'd be pretty neat if it had a little play placehold like something to stop whatever you put there so if you want to put a pin or something you can do that and it won't just slide off this is all soft touch kind of like rubbery soft And the doorway is nice and wide open space uh, so you can get in and out of it the back door a little bit smaller but still as far as the the overall room getting in and out is uh you can see the door is nice and wide so getting in the vehicle here on the passenger side is really nice i mean i have lots of leg room um there's very little tapering here. My arm is here and it's kind of dished out. Uh, I don't feel claustrophobic. The dash is kind of low. It's kind of weird seeing the 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 um, gauges there in the middle. That's weird as a driver because as a passenger, it's still kind of weird. But uh, um, but that's just the way this particular vehicle is. The armrest is kind of small, so I guess you could share it with 
you know me being a passenger I'm all over it so it's going to be a, an issue trying to share that with the driver getting in the back door you notice I had plenty of leg room so I had the seat almost all the way back uh, so getting in the back door and the back door uh, has hard touch surfaces here soft soft um, but not that soft like it's like a piece of cloth laid over an anvil it's not that soft but it does technically soft there okay so let's get into the back seat area this is a little bit harder for me to get past this this part because it kind of tapers down um, but I can get in and it's not a big deal have the pocket here and here but also the zipper part as well you have a like more secure spot two 12 volt power supplies here in the back which is nice very very small hump here in the center so you can have a center passenger here in the center part or you can fold down the armrest and have cup holders the latch system for car seats is covered up with this flap so there's no plastic little thing to lose so it's easy to get to real easy to see and get to um but you know you can cover them up easier than some other vehicles um so my headroom with my head straight up it's basically like one inch above my head and i'm six feet tall With the door shut, sitting in the back seat, I have this uh, armrest. And like these surfaces are not a big deal because the armrest is kind of low. So you're, in, my, in my particular case, my arm is not pressed against it that much. It's just kind of gently resting there. But, um, but yeah, the back seats are pretty good. Actually, let me go ahead and scoot over here. I have this, this driver's seat pretty much all the way back and tilted back. So we're going to see what it's like sitting here in the center part like so starting to get less knee room here um, I'm in a higher position and my head's touching the ceiling so we're right up against the ceiling but that's just the way this cent the center part is much higher than these other parts all right so now I'm behind this and it's like way you see how much room is in the front so uh, I'm kind of I can ride back here I mean it wouldn't be like comfortable for a long trip necessarily but you know it's not bad so the trunk area um, you can see right here there's the backup camera's offset, and then you have the button to release it. And then there's a button here on the right side. That's to lock the vehicle. Um, so as long as you have the key with you, if you can unlock or lock the door here. And when we push that, it actually locks all the doors. So you can push that and walk away after you get your stuff out. Now, I notice it has like this carbon fiber look. And I think it actually is, I think it actually is carbon fiber. Um, it's just not woven carbon fiber. So this right here gives it the impression that it's woven carbon fiber. Um, but it's actually like a regular kind of carbon fiber here. Uh, but it is pretty neat to have that that style. When you, th when you see that, you just instantly think of carbon fiber. Um, but it's just that other type. It kind of looks like a camouflage type carbon fiber. If you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of weird, to, hard to explain. But it's light material and very tough and robust. And you can see this is kind of dished out here. See, when you're putting stuff in, you have a little bit extra space. Now, it has a shade that you can pull back, and you can also take it out of the vehicle um, and fold the seats down. Now, what's weird is when you fold the seats down, it's different from other vehicles. When you fold the seats down, it's actually lower. It's actually considerably lower than the, than the trunk area. Typically, uh, this area will be higher it'll kind of like tilt up but in this case it's actually a little bit lower and i guess that could be that could be useful um to fold the seats down and put stuff there you know i think um like you go to the store and you get big packs of water or something maybe if you fold the seats down you put your water there and then your groceries back here or something like that be kind of interesting so i have some cargo stuff back here and um 
this kind of gets in the way this big flap sometimes like flopping down and getting in your way so i try to flop it up but um it's a little bit of a little bit of a hassle at times um and i have a night video showing you the interior lights it only has this one light it's very dim so that's kind of an issue now this is a plug-in hybrid so it's kind of like a half like a hybrid is typically associated with engine and electric but this one could be an electric only vehicle for a short range and that's where it gets that really high um you know miles per gallon is because it's, it's figuring the um the electric portion so you can see this one uh in particular has the the 110 plug outlet which will take a long time to um to charge it but you can change that to a 220 and it'll be a lot faster and uh so this is what your your plug-in looks like basically you connect it to the vehicle and it has a pretty long cord it's like 20 feet or something and you can store it in there now it does not have a spare tire uh, so it has a tire inflator kit so you know keep that in mind when you're going on a long long trip or something especially on weekends and you have an issue with a tire that could be a big pain in the butt if you don't have a spare tire uh, so it just has a tire inflator kit that might not work for you know your situation so you might get stranded so have some hotel money ready if that happens um because they're going to basically tow your vehicle to a place that might be closed on the weekend and then you have to wait till monday to have before you get back on your trip if you have an issue with if you don't if you don't have a spare tire that kind of thing so you keep that in mind now the the hatchback look how big that is having a hatchback is a dream for carrying stuff so if you have a large box or whatever you basically have like almost no limitations as far as the opening usually a trunk space is limited by what you can fit through the opening um as far as large items well this is like no limitations basically on that it's nice and wide open easy to get to and um really like hatchback vehicles in general just really convenient convenient and efficient is basically what you know what the prius prime is going for um and the styling of course that's a subjective matter so you can you know let me know what you th what you think in the comment section has a traditional cap tether and a place place to hang the cap here you won't need to put gas in it that often because it's so good on fuel on the passenger side uh, this is where you actually charge the vehicle so um, it has a place it has there, there's your charge port right there uh, so depending on your where you're at you may be able to charge with a you know like a faster like a 220 charger or a 110 uh, and you have the charger in the uh, trunk area We'll take a peek under the hood. There's a little latch there in the very center. Um, so you can see what it looks like. It, you know, but regular, it looks like a regular engine transmission. It isn't like, nothing really stands out um, except for this unit right here. As far as, you know, like wonky or weird or crazy, uh, it's like some electric vehicles just kind of have a, a different style. This just kind of looks like a regular engine. You even have your battery up here that's easy to get to and all that stuff. Okay, so I have the seat. Okay, so I can actually put the seat further back. When I was sitting in the back, the seat wasn't quite all the way back. Um, and I'm six feet tall, so having the seat all the way back is a little bit too far back, really. Um, it really needs to come up a little bit. So the steering wheel is soft and comfortable and a good thickness. It's pretty standard, nothing like super, as far as the grip part, nothing negative to say, it's pretty pretty normal. Um, your cruise control is down here still. So some vehicles have moved it up on this steering wheel area, but this one has the standard, you know, stock, extra stock here at the bottom. And if you're accustomed to that, that's probably a good thing. Uh, you do have your uh, lane keep assist and your uh, adaptive cruise control settings here, heated steering wheel. Uh, these buttons correspond with the screen up there, and then you have your volume for your radio, change to your audio source, and your tracks there. You can reset your trip, your Bluetooth controls and voice recognition is here on the left side. Windshield wiper controls here, and then your turn signal with your headlight controls are here on the left side. You can actually have da daytime running light off, which turns off all the exterior lights, and you have automatic and then regular light controls with the fog lights controlled here. Here on here in this section, 
So you have automatic high beams too. Uh, so that's something you will need to put your high beams on and then turn the automatic set uh, function on and it'll work. Down here you can push that and it'll, this will have a set time period in which when your vehicle's plugged in, it'll charge when you choose to charge it, not all the time. So you can set the time in which you want the vehicle to charge. All right, so that you can turn on or off your, your uh, hood. It has a heads up display here. And we'll see that while we're driving, hopefully. Uh, you do have the park assist toward like, it'll actually turn the steering wheel and stuff and, and put you in a parallel or perpendicular parking space. Um, but I like to personally park my vehicle, so I hadn't really, I don't really use that. Um, then the trash control is here. You can turn it off. Default will be on. That's your dimmer switch for your interior gauges. It basically dims all your, your, get, your, your, your dash and everything. Um, so you can make it really bright or really dim here. So you can play around with the settings on the screen and you can adjust the brightness all you want. But when you adjust this, it pretty much overrides everything. So, you know, keep that in mind. If you're trying to play around with this um, and, and it's not getting the way you want it, then you can just use this to really do it. Uh, as far as the screen, it uh, makes a big difference. And the screen is pretty big. It's like 11 inches tall and it's, um, it's a little bit excess. It's not the best as far as ease of use. Um, so you have your climate control. So you have your climate control settings here, uh, menu, you know, so things are not always in the same place necessarily. So you can pull up a menu and then you have this right here. And then you can have Apple CarPlay. You can go into your settings. You can go into your display settings, uh, put in a destination, all that stuff. So you have like some basic pop-up things right here. When you push the home button, um, you notice you have destination, phone, you, it, it's kind of like there's not like one, one spot for everything. It's like things are in different spots. Um, and also your volume for radio, when you're trying to turn up or down the volume, or you're sitting there pushing buttons here and here, here and here, there's no knob. So that's something to consider. Um, temperature, same thing. You have to like, you know, push, 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 push. Front and rear defrosters are here. And your climate control is kind of integrated. There's no very little redundancy as far as extra buttons here. And, um, you know, that's a plus or minus, however you want to look at it. So let's go. So you got your Bluetooth here. It's not connected right now. There's your climate. See what that looks like. And then your home button. Can slide through. So you notice these buttons are the same as this this type of deal. So you have different ways of getting to it. Um, we can change the audio source. Let's go ahead and go to satellite radio. Turn the volume down by tapping in a thousand times. Okay, so we have your presets here that you can go to, and you know different things but you notice you have to pull this up and then change the audio source here you can of course use the steering wheel um, that kind of thing so the satellite the, the the climate and the radio uh, both stay in this spot so which is good so you can find them easier um, you know and then you have these right here so like I like the map is pretty cool because of the height of the of the screen so you can follow the road more I um, really like the way the map layout is in this vehicle. Uh, you can also get into your, you know, if you really want to focus on your fuel economy and all that stuff, you can do that in this vehicle. It has trip computers and all that stuff. Um, let's go to the app suite. I don't have the app installed on my phone. Um, we'll just get it. It's the Intune system. And you can change, like if you change, you can have apps on your phone and then it will update here. And, and they're connected, like it's different from Apple CarPlay. So the Intune is a completely different system. And uh, Michael Holmes at Sparks Toyota, he has uh, talked about that on my channel, the Intune system. He has more experience than I do, so I'd, I'd, I would have to refer to him really. So up here, there's the, when I'm driving this vehicle, there's, there's a lot of little things 
clustered here and there. So when I'm driving, I can see the digital speedometer great here. Heads up display has it as well. Um, so that so you see the digital speedometer, but you notice there's a lot of stuff around it. There's a lot of little things. So the fuel the, the fuel gauge is right above it, and then you have the odometer, you have the average R, the miles per gallon, and then you have the eco mode, and then you have the outside temperature, all kind of clustered around in that little tiny screen. To the right of that, you have another screen, which you can control here with this button, and you have more stuff. Um, so there's a lot of numbers and, and things, and it's far away from your eyes. So if you have you know, if you're driving and you have these like a bunch of numbers and stuff, it gets a little confusing unless you know right where to look. It, it, it seems like it's not, this energy monitor will probably be the best thing to put there. So that way you don't have so many little numbers and stuff on the screen. And you go to the, uh, to the right more, you have a digital clock, which is kind of small and far away. Uh, and then you have all these little, you know, lights that, turn on or off you know like your safety features and stuff and what gear you're in so it's like this little thin um bar up there with a whole bunch of little numbers and stuff down here you know it it's you have to go into something before you can get to what you want okay so a lot of a lot of screens like let's say it had this menu here on the right side that i think that would be a good example and you had all the different options like lined up and then now you can choose what you want instead of hitting that then going to say this and then going to say this right so that's three steps to get where you want if it had shortcuts it had icons or something to where that way you can get to things so you don't have to go to this and this and then getting back out of it you notice we're going back and back and back you know so um, this could be, I think, a little bit better. But anyways, these are things that um, I've noticed driving the vehicle. The shifter takes a little bit of getting used to, and once you get used to it, it's not a big deal. So over, up is reverse. In the backup camera, you notice there's one thing, the beeping. Every time you put it in reverse, it beeps at you. The backup camera, this whole part here, from here down, is blank. And then you only have that. So... Um, I think that could be a little bit better. Over, down is drive. So now we're in drive. Um, and then park is this button. Uh, going over here and holding it goes in the neutral. All right. So down, just without going over, you just, you just hold it, go down. This will give you your engine braking. So if you are in... You have to go and drive, and then you come over here and you just hold it down. This will give you, um, I say engine braking. It's actually going to use the um, the momentum of the vehicle to charge the battery using uh, the the momentum of the vehicle. And that will actually slow down the vehicle a little bit. So it's, it's kind of like engine braking. Because uh, you're going down a hill or something with a regular vehicle, you would use engine braking. And then you have different drive modes here. Um, so you have power, eco, and normal. So power, eco, and normal. Um, and then EV. Uh, and then you have, um, you know, like your regular, if you want to go into EVO, EV mode, you have to have some battery charge. This one doesn't have it right now. Um, but basically, you know, hybrid or EV is what your option. It just switches. So you push it. And then you have EV auto. Um, so that way it'll switch to EV mode on and off depending and it'll but it'll it'll try to hang on to ev more with this particular thing this is switching permanently like all the way to ev mode and all the way off type thing to hybrid down here is a um, wireless charger which is pretty cool and it's kind of like a you know you put something there like so cell phone and charge now if you have a real thick case it doesn't work 100 percent. sometimes it doesn't get a good you know connection um, but sometimes it does, so it's kind of hit or miss as far as you have a large case. Uh, yeah, thick case. You have your uh, heated seat controls, high and low, so it's a two-stage for your driver and passenger. There's cup holders in here. And in here, kind of like around, you have to like look over the edge of this to find it, is an auxiliary input, USB, and 12-volt power supply. 
So the armrest, um, it bottoms out quickly, so it's not super soft or anything, and it's not super wide, but it is pretty long. And to open it up, there's a button here in the front. You push that, and it and it lifts up this way, which is kind of weird, but it's it works fine. And it has this tray here in the top that you can take out if you want to. And it goes in there quite a ways. And there's no light or anything in there, and there's no plugs or anything like that either. It's just a storage space. Rearview mirror has auto dim. It's an auto dimming rearview mirror, and you turn that feature on or off with this button. And then you have your home link, home link garage door opener controls here at the base of it. Place to put some small glasses or sunglasses or whatever. Tap lights, standard bulbs. All the interior lights are standard bulbs, it seems. You turn them all on, all off or on with the door, and then you have a sorority side assistance button here. The visors, they do not slide out, but they do have this extra extension here. So, and I like the way um, it adds to your coverage instead of just shifting your coverage. So if it slid, then it just shifts your coverage. You do have a, uh, a mirror and a little light that turns on as well. Same thing on the passenger side, it's basically the same visor. So let's drive it and maybe you'll get an idea of what the visibility is all about. Got the uh, beeping going on. Unfortunately, that's the thing with this vehicle, backing up. And I'm sure there's a good reason for it, but it's a little annoying if you're not accustomed to it. And one thing I've noticed is, um, those funny, the little dip in the back and the glass kind of gives you a little bit better visibility. It's pretty cool. But I've noticed that the the power, I mean, it has some pretty decent power uh, driving it. You know, the electric motor in with the gas engine just kind of like gives you some pretty zippy power when you need it. If you drive it easy, it feels kind of weak. Um, but when you really push the pedal, it does um, it does provide you with a decent amount of power. And zipping through the parking lot like this is really comfortable. Um, the steering wheel is nice and smooth, and it's electric power steering, so you don't have to go that fast. You, as actually going slow, it's easy to turn the steering wheel. It doesn't matter if the engine's revving or whatever, or if the engine's even on in this case. It could be a could just be um, engine off and electric. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on the um, cruise control so we can demonstrate the adaptive cruise control. Now it has a lane keep assist, but I don't feel the steering wheel like moving at all. So maybe it's just me. Um, because even when I push this button, it says lane departure alert on, steering assist active. So it does beep at me when I go too close to the line, but it doesn't actually turn the steering wheel that I, I've noticed. Okay, so I'm pushing the brake and canceling the... Uh, since we're going up here to this circle. The brakes are smooth as glass, nice and smooth. And the acceleration through little environments, you have that nice little fam, little, little push from the electric motor. And I would say this vehicle's, for the most part, pretty quiet. Uh, it's not like, um, you know, for what it is. I mean, there is some road noise and stuff, but uh, it's not really that, an, you know, the, the outside noise is not really a big deal. Especially when you're playing the radio. It has the uh, JBL sound system, and it is, uh, it is pretty awesome. I was sitting in the car and I had my music playing, um, and it changed to the, another song that had a little bit more bass, you know? 
and I noticed the rearview mirror was vibrating. I was like, what? Usually factory systems don't have, um, they don't have enough, you know, power or something to vibrate the mirror, but this one actually had a little bit of vibration going on. Um, usually you have to get a aftermarket system for that. Even vehicles that have a pretty good subwoofer, I think what it is is just the, the rear view mirrors are like better quality or something than what I'm used to back in the day that, you know, you that that's how you judge your uh, your radio is how much the vibration of the rear view mirror. Um, anyways, but yeah, I was pretty surprised to see that. But it sounds really good too. It's not a it's not just the vibration of the rear, rear view mirror. It sounds really nice and crisp when you can crank it up. Uh, there's no no knob to turn though. It's a little annoying sitting there pressing buttons like da 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 da. da. Oh, that's too loud. Da 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 da. It's um or you know holding it, you know, it, it, you don't have a sense of how far it's going until you hear. And then all of a sudden it's too loud. Then you gotta like try to hold it down. So uh, I think a knob it gives you more of a you know like a an idea of how much you're you're going with it. You know up or down. And also it's faster, it's faster and more intuitive. Now the heads up display gives you some useful information and I'm not a big fan of heads up displays, but this one's not bad. It doesn't, uh, there's something about it that, does, that doesn't bother me. Um, it does have the digital speedometer and it, it, it shows you what gear, I mean, not what gear, your, what speed your cruise control set. Now, if you have, um, if you, that's basically the only way to find out. Like looking at this screen over here, there's so many numbers. Um, it just doesn't show up your your cruise control. What's going on with your cruise control? So the only way you can find out is up here. Um, but it doesn't always show it. Like depending on what's on the screen, it might go away for a while. What your uh, what your speed is set at. So. You know, it's kind of strange, but whatever. It's a, that's the thing about vehicles is you have to get used to them. And, and you know, when you, like, I've driven this car for less than the week. So, and I, and I, it's real easy to pass judgment on things that you're not accustomed to because it's just not what you're accustomed to. Um, so this is a non-traditional, non-standard interior for one thing. You have the, you have this, there's no gauges in front of you like normally you look at gauges here that's what most vehicles have this one has like this more elongated screen in the but it's in the center so now so it's further away so um basically to me the first day or two that inf that, you, that might as well just not have been there because it's so comp there's all this stuff over there and it's far away i couldn't really see it anyway so i just ignored it uh and focused on you know my speedometer on the heads-up display I think that's another reason why the heads-up display is I keep it up there because it's you pretty much have to um, because now that, that that speedometer don't get me wrong that's great as far as the size of the letters if it just had nothing around it it's kind of like it has too much stuff around it too much complication there for me anyways that's my preferences But overall, I mean, getting in the vehicle, I had other people in the vehicle that they, they, they like the comfort and and the visibility, you know, you can see out really good. Um, out the back, as far as the driver goes, it's got good visibility. Uh, it does have the rear cross traffic alert and the blind spot monitor system as well. It's in the indicators are on the side mirrors. But um, but yeah, overall, I, I think it's just a, a an economical and convenient vehicle you know uh, not everybody's all excited about the style and I can understand that but you know it sometimes style I mean, it's subjective some people love the way this car looks but sometimes you get style gets old after a while when it's inconvenient it's really a problem uh, then you know as far as the convenience goes then you're probably not going to be all excited about the style it kind of ruins the style sometimes if you're over encumbered with inconveniences um so i think this is a it's fun to drive uh as far as like you know zipping around town it has enough power and it has enough uh, what do you call it 
It's just convenient and easy to easy to get where you're going and you can get the family in and out easy. It holds five people. So, I mean, I think it's a, and the price is not that bad. I mean, the price Let's look at this window sticker again. So, it has a bottom line price here of 34 four. okay? So, I mean, there's a lot of vehicles out on the market now that are like crazy prices. For 34 four, basically, you're getting a lot of technology. You're getting a lot of efficiency. Um, so, this is a pretty interesting vehicle. Let me know what you think in the comments um, about this vehicle, but also about the style of this video and if it's useful um, to be able to experience and kind of like experience things in a way that's kind of first person and stuff. And, um, you know, if my input was was helpful with my, this, you're you're able to get a sense of the vehicle this way or my other videos that are more like established with all the camera angles and all that stuff um or you like this or better or not so anyways thank you for watching i'll see you next time